The truth is you've got to approach your customers first. So what I did is I downloaded a tool, User Gems on Shopify, which sorts your customers by the amount of followers they have. Okay. And so I would get a notification if someone had over 1,000 followers, if they would buy from us. And we started getting people with 100,000 followers, 200,000 followers, 50,000 followers. And so I'd pick up the phone and give them a call and say, hey, you know, are you on social media? I'd play dumb and they'd be like, yes. And said, uh, we have an amazing referral program. We pay up to 50% you know, of the sale to you. And I can put a coupon code right now. It takes me five seconds to set up a coupon code if you wanted to share, if you like the product. And then I could pay you. And said, so, oh, that sounds cool. So uh, you know, one out of two would do it. You're listening to Business Lunch with Roland Frazier. This is your seat at the table. Hey everybody, this is Roland Frazier and I want to welcome you to this episode of Business Lunch. And my guest this time is Josh Snow from Snow Laboratories. You guys do all kinds of fun stuff. Will you just kind of give us a little blurb about what you do and welcome to the show? Awesome. Thanks, Roland. So we started off as a teeth whitening consumer product. So we invented, really it was myself and a couple of friends who were dentists and oral surgeons helped me with the formula initially for teeth whitening. We saw a gap between white strips in the $30 to $50 range, and we saw the dental treatments in the $300 to $500 range. So we saw an opportunity to create something that gave dental quality results with the convenience of strips for you know, a fraction of the cost. Mm-hmm. And that theory came to fruition. And now we're known as uh, simply Snow and the company Snow Laboratories because we found what we're really good at is, you know, we don't sell anything we haven't invented and disrupting the oral care industry primarily um, by creating products that are want to have instead of just need to have. And uh, that was kind of the whole question I had when I walked down the oral care aisle about four years ago was like, why can't I feel good about these products? Why am I only buying toothpaste when I run out of toothpaste? And Mm -hmm. why am I not posting pictures of my floss, my mouthwash, my teeth, you know, my strips, you know, why is it not cool? Mm. And I said, you know, everybody's got teeth and whether someone wants to white in or they don't, we have products. We also have a top selling anti-aging lip care line. So we're in the mouth, around the mouth, a little around the face. And our belief is that oral care can be beautiful for you. It, it can help you feel more beautiful. It can help you f- be healthier, but it can also be good for the earth and it can use natural ingredients as well. Nice. That's great. There's a whole lot of stuff in there to talk about. So the idea was it you were looking for something to do or did it just kind of happen because you were looking for a teeth whitening and couldn't find exactly what you wanted? Well, I, I've been whitening my teeth since I was 13 years old. That's when I started in business. And uh, I was kind of self-conscious of my smile growing up. And um, I eventually got braces and then got braces again and then had jaw surgery. So I had a Lafort osteotomy where they take an oscillating saw and take off your top jaw and it's kind of oh brutal. Seven and a half hour surgery. It was voluntary, fortunately. A lot of people don't have a choice and have to go through jaw surgery, but I had my entire jaw rearranged and put back in my head. Wow. So I've got 16 screws, four plates in my skull and it was the best decision of my life. I had a lot of pain when I used to talk. Essentially, I talked for a living. So after an hour of talking, first thing in the morning, I'd have headache, migraine, jaw pain. I'd be irritable, like wow. horrible. So through that process of spending years and years in braces and going through the jaw surgery, I also became friends with the oral surgeon and the orthodontist and the dentist because I was seeing them so often. Mm-hmm. And of course, I'm sure there was some novelty or some curiosity around why is this you know, t- you know, know, 20-year-old showing up in a Lamborghini on a Wednesday afternoon when he should be at school. Or like, why is he not at school? It's like, well, I graduated. Like, well, you're 20 years old. How'd you graduate? The other guy's been two years. Oh, okay. So then after a while, we started hanging out. We'd mm-hmm. go to dinner and talk about business. And I was giving them marketing advice. And, you know, I thought about it. I was spending so much time. I was buying all kinds of products. Because while I was doing the braces and all the stuff in my mouth, I had dry mouth, so I had to go buy dry mouth spray. Mm-hmm. I had to try all the different mouthwashes. I had to try different toothpaste, different toothbrushes, different floss, because then I had braces, then I had the gear, and then I had this and that. Mm. So I pretty much bought everything in the oral care aisle at Walmart, Target, mm-hmm. everywhere. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was never really impressed or excited as I broke it down. I said, why can't I feel good about it? Like if I'm buying... Beats headphones, or if I'm buying an Apple iPhone, why can't I feel good about these things? I was spending a lot of money on them. So, you know, I asked one day, I said to my oral surgeon, I said, where's the money at, you know, for a guy like me, you know, if I wanted to get in this space? He said, well, the only thing that I do that you could do is teeth whitening. So that's when I went, and I am obsessed with research. I'm a voracious reader. I haven't always been, but 
once I realized that I'm all about buying time and for $9, I can buy a book and buy a lot of time and experience. So anyway, I did all my research. I read everything I could on teeth fighting, which surprisingly wasn't that much. It took me about six months to read everything I could. And I also talked to as many people as I could. I paid for consulting, even to just dentists. I'd call them up and say, hey, can I give you a thousand bucks for an hour or two of your time to just chat about teeth whitening? Mm -hmm. And they're like, it's weird, but okay. <laughs> and I've never had that asked before. And I was like, hey, I've seen your blog posts, or I've seen your writings. And then I compiled all the Amazon reviews. I understood pros and cons. And, and then I put up some of my money. And although I was well into the millions when I started Stowe, it's, I didn't go and put millions of dollars in from the start. I still wanted to treat it like a bootstrap, startup, startup self-funded. And I've spent more time than I did money which is the most expensive thing, but mm -hmm. I wanted to sell something that I could feel good about, that I could wear on my shirt and tell everyone about, and it had to work, it had to look good, and it had to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. And that was the first version of the product, and I designed the first version of the website myself. Mm -hmm. I put it in Shopify, created the first ads on Facebook, okay. and uh, ran it, and started calling up the customers one by one and saying, what do you like? What do you not like about the product? How can I make it better? What do you like about the experience? Oh, shipping could have been faster. Or the box, you know, came a little disheveled. Or this, this, this. Or I like this. I like that. Then they say, my lips are dry. And I say, your lips are dry? I say, yeah, I've got the thing in my mouth for 30 minutes and my lips are dry. And I said, well, I've got to do something about that. Maybe some chapstick. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, wait a second. Chapstick's kind of boring. Mm -hmm. and I said, could I do something different? Can we change lip balm? And so then we introduced the first version of our anti-aging lip balm, which is now a top seller um, nice. worldwide because of listening to the customer. And then they said, what about a lip scrub? And what about this? And what about that? And so learning from the customers has been key. But initially what got me into it was going through it myself, mm -hmm. spending a lot of time in the oral care aisle, and asking a question, why can't these things look good? Right. So the decision to penetrate the existing market more deeply to sell more of the teeth whitening thing, the first thing you did, or get into these other products that you identified. That's kind of a tough one for folks. How did you deal with that? Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. You've got to build a core product or a core set of products, mm -hmm. whether that's a mattress and then you launch sheets and everything else, whatever that is. I think it's important to not overextend yourself with product selection because then you're trying to find product market fit across five different products. Right. And we found that our customer base, although we get... 15-year-olds buying it, you know, they want it as a gift. I mean, our biggest accomplishment as a brand is we believe that we're one of the only, if not the only, giftable brand in oral care. I mean, people cry when they receive the products and I get the videos and it's amazing. But you start off somewhere, you tip that first domino and it's going to take you down that path. And you might think that you want to build a millennial brand, but you might recognize, like in our case, that right now a lot of our customers are 45 and up and they've tried strips and they've tried dental treatments those are our best customers mm -hmm. because they've tried it all they're educated on it they're scared they're scared to try it so it does take a little bit more time to get them convinced do you do anything to help them reduce the risk in terms of guarantees or things like that 100 percent results guarantee we have a five-year warranty nice. which is unheard of mm -hmm. um we have great customer support and we're constantly reinvesting there anyone has a problem with their mouthpiece or whatever it is we send it to them and we try to lead with Look, look, we're going to get the product to you fast. Use it for 21 days. Take the 21-day challenge. If you don't see results that you're proud of or excited about, we can either send you some more serum. Maybe you're not using the strongest one. We'll send you something stronger. Or we'll send you a refund, and you can try again later. And mm -hmm. My thing is I would rather give them the money back, which we have less than a 1% return rate. The product simply works really well. Oh, it's superior. Great. But you know, if someone wants a refund, you know, I've advised my team to simply give a refund. And our thing is, as long as that person has teeth, when we come out with toothpaste and mouthwash like we do now, floss and lip care, they might say, you know what, that company treated me well. You know, they had a guarantee. But, uh, you know, they treated me well. They gave me my money back. And you know what, I'm going to give them another shot with this toothpaste. That's cool. So now you weren't a product designer. You, I think you said you learned how to program when you were 13. But right. um, when you decided to kind of go in this route, you're not a designer, not a technical guy as far as creating products. How did you do that? And maybe that'll help other people that want to invent things too. You know, I've always been creative, I think. You know, I think I get a good split from my mother and father. My, my mom was a hairdresser and hairstylist and painter. Mm -hmm. And I remember growing up, my birthday parties, 
you know, that she would put on and decorate, and they were always the most, <laughs> right? Multiple cakes and multiple balloons and multiple, you know, and it's just a lot, right? Right. And my mom's that way, and I, and I love her to death, and she's a lot. Mm-hmm. And my dad is very silent. He's a silent thinker. Mm-hmm. He's uh, very intellectual, a man of few words, but of impactful words. And I think that between the two of them, I learned how to chase difficulty through my father. You know, I remember him leaving me printouts on the table of quantum physics, which I still have no idea about, but I would read and try to digest what I could so we could talk about it over Mm -hmm. dinner. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I think that everybody has it in them Mm -hmm. to a certain degree. And some have it more. There are plenty of people who are much more creative than me, much better designers than me. I think I've got a little bit of a shopping addiction. It doesn't mean that I buy everything, but a window shopping addiction at least. Mm -hmm. And I love gadgets, huge into gadgets. Yeah. I have every Apple product, you know, I love gadgets. So I'm a nerd, you know? So as far as the product, so you were talking to the, you were kind of hanging out with the orthodontist and dentist and folks like that, and you found the gap of there's nothing really between the white strip and the service that they did. So you knew that you wanted to do that. How did you go about creating the product? So what I did tactically is I went and grabbed all the formulas of the top 25 sellers I could find online. Okay put them on an Excel sheet and put an X next to the commonalities they had between them and found that the majority of the formulas were pretty much the same. Mm-hmm. It was a single ingredient in the formulas, usually hydrogen peroxide. peroxide yeah. And then I looked at the LED technology that was out there on the market and you know, I started asking people and I went on clarity.fm mm-hmm. to hire a chemist to talk to and say, hey, is there anything photocatalytic? Is there anything that the light actually does in these other guys' ingredients? Mm-hmm. And like, there's no way. I mean, maybe the cold or maybe the heat can accelerate the, you know, the distribution and the mm-hmm. efficacy, but marginally. Right. And I said, well, wait a second. You know, Zoom has a great product in the dentist that is, you know, a few hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, it's known to, you know, potentially cause sensitivity, but you know, it uses ultraviolet, which is why they put this. They protect your gums and they do all this. So then I said, I know nothing mm-hmm. about LED, but I'm going to study it. So I said, you know, I'm always of the belief that, look, somebody that's an expert in LED at one point wasn't. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to read it. So I started reading about the nanometric ranges and saying, okay, what's used for skin? What's used for this? What's used for this? And then I said, okay, what is photoreactive? How can we photoaccelerate the serum? Because really the way our serum works is similar to a lot of the serums on the market. Ours is a complex blend, but what happens is that oxygen removes stains. Mm -hmm. And the problem with oxygen is that it needs to have a porous material. So it's really good on fibers like carpet. Right. But the issue is if it's not a porous material, so veneers, bridges, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So then the question is, how do we whiten surface stains without being an abrasive? So that was the first question. Second question was, how do we have the efficacy of a dental treatment without causing the sensitivity of a dental treatment? Because the higher up you go in hydrogen peroxide, the more sensitivity Mm -hmm. occurs. Mm -hmm. So we said, okay, well, wait a second. Well, what if we delayed the oxidizing that happens as the carbamide peroxide, which breaks down to hydrogen peroxide and hydrogen? So we added an ingredient that is a photocatalyst that is complementary to the oxidation of the hydrogen and the carbamide. Mm-hmm. We added some other things that help with the sensitivity. So they're a little bit kind of, you know, like anti-hypersensitivity. Mm-hmm. So essentially the, the idea was when I sat there, I was like, what if I mixed, you know, sensodyne toothpaste and I put in a barrel and then I mixed strips, you know, and I mixed this and this, what would that do? Right. So then I went on Clarity and talked to the chemist again. Then I went on LinkedIn and I found the chemist at L'Oreal and said, could I pay you a few thousand bucks to help me out with this? And uh, they're like, yeah, it doesn't work that way. You can't just mix sensodyne in this. So it's like, you got to, there's balances, <laughs> there's things that don't react together. There's, right. So we found our nanometric range. Did um, that person end up working with you? That's a consultant. Yeah, that's great. Okay. It was just me, really, in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, I try to find the best in class, and mm-hmm. I try to. I can't hire everyone because they're not hireable, but I can certainly ask if they can spend an hour with me. That's great. And I come extra prepared, so that's where that came from. That's really cool. Now, it does have a very kind of cool design. Most of the things in that space do not. It sounds like you said that was a conscious decision. Yeah, to stand out. Like I said, I'm a good shopper. I like to window shop, so I see a lot of stuff, and I think... What would stand out here? And I take cues from the beauty space, mm-hmm. you know, makeup, skincare, color cosmetics, and then fragrance, and then also cars. I look at my cars and I look at other people's cars and I say, wow, I like this about it. And I, this is interesting. And so as we're building our toothbrush, 
we're thinking through what are the materials we're using that would be used in a Ferrari or that would be used okay. in Please. a Bentley or and a And was it intended to be upscale? Yes. Okay. My belief is in the market, it's very difficult to compete in the middle. Mm-hmm. Unless you have a vertical integrative advantage, it's hard to compete at the bottom of the market. And unless you're really good at branding and marketing and you have a superior product, it's hard to be at the top. Right. But I felt like my skill set and my interest matched they were much more aligned at the top of the market. I wanted to create something that was high end because there was nothing really there. Right. And so I decided to take that plunge initially. And it's a dangerous move because you know we're three times the price of our you know retail competitors. What's now, the about- price of the product? 150 okay. uh, for the base model, 299 up to 300. I mean, we have different versions, but right. people are spending over 100 bucks versus spending 30 bucks at the store sure. for something that they think is the same. But right. the results are, we believe, significantly different. We believe the side effects can be significantly different. We believe also the aesthetic of it. It's like, you know, a Ferrari gets you from A to B or B to C, and it's maybe the same similar amount of time, maybe a little faster, mm-hmm. as another car does. But how does it make you feel, mm-hmm. right? And that feeling is what we wanted the brand to kind of evoke, is that aesthetic. How does it make you feel? Does it make you want to use it more? Because when something makes you feel good, you want to do it more often. So as promised, we're going to quickly interrupt the show to give you the details of an amazing opportunity. Here's Roland to tell you about it. I'd like to offer you the opportunity to join me in a very small group of ultra-successful entrepreneurs on the evenings of March 31st and April 1st this year, at this year's Traffic and Conversion Summit in San Diego, California. We've arranged for a very small group of people to sit down and meet face-to-face with some of the most successful, most powerfully effective people of our time. You'll have the chance to connect in a very small group with each of the following people. The A-list actor, politician, real estate investor, marketer, and philanthropist Arnold Schwarzenegger. You'll also meet the TV reality star, the business turnaround expert, billion-dollar CEO and philanthropist Marcus Lemonis, the inventor, billionaire, fashion mogul and philanthropist that you'll also meet is Chip Wilson. Over two evenings at Traffic and Conversion Summit, you're invited to join this very small elite group of successful entrepreneurs and world changers to have a conversation with not only these three entrepreneurs and to have your photo taken with them, but also Jay Abraham, who is known as the $4 billion man, Also, Kevin Harrington, the original shark on TV Shark Tank. Also, Marie Forleo, one of the most successful female entrepreneurs in the world today and one of the uh, protégés of Oprah Winfrey. Also, Shalene Johnson, one of the leading fitness entrepreneurs in the world. And the most important thing about this is that you will have proximity to them and to several other surprise guests as well. And this time connecting with these high-level people and the people in the room may be the beginning of a dramatic acceleration of your own success and impact trajectory. The investment for the next 10 spots at this event is $6,495. And when those are gone, the investment it will rise to $6,995. In all, only a small group of people are going to be allowed to participate in this ultra-exclusive VIP event, and the structure ensures your close proximity to everyone at the event. Each celebrity will spend time speaking to you and a small group of no more than nine other entrepreneurs after a quick photo op to memorialize your evening, and you will be meeting celebrity after celebrity after celebrity as we have them come through and talk with you. So you have a chance to ask them the questions that are really, really burning in your mind right now. So don't miss the opportunity to gain proximity. Over my career, I found that the largest leaps in my network and my net worth have been through paying for access to the people I want to think like, to be like, to connect with, to work with. I can attribute tens of millions of dollars to these connections. The first step is proximity. To apply to see if you're a fit for this group, all you have to do is visit the website tandcvip.com. That's tandcvip.com, as in Traffic and Conversion Summit VIP, because that's what you'll be when you attend this. Uh, this price also includes one ticket to TNC. So if you think this might be a fit for you, you'll never really have a better opportunity to get up close and personal with so many 
high achievers. You're talking billionaires, billion dollar company creators, culture changers. It's really an unprecedented ability uh, and opportunity for you to access these people. Would love to have you with us. And um, if you think it's a fit, again, visit the website T and C vip.com t and c vip.com thank you and we'll go back to our program so how did you uh, go about finding the designers to help make the product look the way you wanted it to look so the initial design was literally a drawing on a whiteboard mm -hmm. that i drew mm -hmm. and initially i sent that over to china and said what can you do for me and then they introduced me to another factory and then another factory. So I was just getting intro mm -hmm. And then I found the broker who was going to help me kind of talk between the factories. And one company's going to make our silicone. The other company's going to make our LED panel board. And the other's going to make our connector. And so kind of built a supply chain thanks to a broker mm -hmm. and said, I just want it to look good. Send me some samples. Send me some ideas. And then I started showing people around. Mm -hmm. Then the, for the wireless edition, a uh, buddy of mine was talking about Balkan was acquired by Foxconn. And Foxconn is you know, famous or sometimes infamous for being the producer of iPhone components yep. in China. And so they bought Balkan. And Balkan had come out with their Wemo product to turn on and off the lights with your phone. And the team that had built that product had left after the acquisition. And a buddy of mine had worked with one of the guys there mm -hmm. to create a fidget spinner that was connected to an app. And I thought that was one of the coolest things I had seen. Mm -hmm. It plays a game. It's got accelerometer. You can see everything. And I said, who made that? He said, oh, you know, well, I've got a, a buddy of mine that we hired to do it. And I was like, I would love to meet this guy. Again, I'm always looking for great people. Mm -hmm. Met the guy, uh, went out to California, met with him. And he had just started a consulting company because he no longer wanted to work for a company. He wanted to go out on his own. And I said, we'll be your first client. Mm -hmm. And maybe if we do well enough, we'll be your only client. Right. And I said, I need your help. And he goes, well, Josh, I've never made a beauty product. You know, I make electronics. I make right. gadgets. Right. You know, I make the instant crock pot that you can program from your phone. You know, I make those things. And I said, that's perfect. Because no one has ever done what we're about to do. And I need the fact that you don't have that as an advantage. I will teach you the beauty space. I will teach you the aesthetic we're looking for. Okay. But I need the true technology that you have. Mm -hmm. So we can bring real technology not gimmicky technology, but real technology into the oral care space to build connected health, right. connected dental, and I will handle the design and together we'll do it. And then that's then, we got the team together, and I think within three months we had the initial CAD designs, we had the initial mock-ups, and then three months later we had the prototype, and three months later we're in full production. That's great. And uh, we got six global patents pending, it's a revolutionary device, and what we figured out with that device is really, really extraordinary. That's really cool. Now you got the product and you've got the design and it's in your hands. Let's uh, hop to that place. How do you get sales? Yep. So initial was Facebook ads and I knew right away and I had consulted some of my buddies who were doing a lot on Facebook and stuff and coming from an agency background and coming from having built and sold a few brands, we had used a few different people for Google ads and Facebook ads. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to make the first ad mm -hmm. because I wanted to understand. I wanted to feel it, you mm -hmm. know? And I also didn't want to put too much more money behind it before I knew it was something right. good. I mean, I'll be honest with you, right? Even How then, much were you in, roughly, if you don't mind saying, at that probably point? Probably 200000 Okay. Probably 250 And all from your own money? All from my own money. And I said, all right, let's give this a shot. And so I remember firing up Ad Espresso mm -hmm. and putting together 60 variations of the ad. And right away, we hit with what were our, our leading points. We have a unique formula that is designed for sensitive teeth. We are designed to work on all teeth, including braces. We have a results guarantee, some risk reversal there, and then a picture that was eye-grabbing. It was just a static image at the time. I think I bought like a stock photo or something. Mm -hmm. And then when they hit the landing page, I wrote the copy on the page and talked about the, the process of creating this product after trying all these other products. Mm -hmm. Here were the problems that I saw and spent the last nine months putting together this formula that is unique. No one else has it. Mm -hmm. Give it a shot. Boom, boom, boom. And it's just started to take off. And I think it was timing helped a lot for sure. Um, the costs per clicks were a lot cheaper back then. You could get a lot more traffic. And I needed my margin to be at least 50% so that I could reinvest it, you know? Yeah. And, and that started it. And, you know, we started in the latter half of 2017 was when I really started to push it hard. Mm -hmm. uh, I had done some tests before, but 
So timing was great because then you move right into Q4. We did a million dollars in sales. And by then I had started to build a team, fulfillment, customer support, one by one, just little one by ones. Mm -hmm. And I was still doing a lot of everything too. Because mm -hmm. I'm kind of crazy. I like to print the labels in the first few days. I like to feel it. I like to slap the label on. Uh -huh. And then once I feel like, okay, this is a, you know, at least a part-time job, let me bring someone in full time right. to take this on and grow with me. And uh, little by little, what was first batch of products now. We've got a suite of products, mm -hmm. and it's expanding. So that's where it started. Uh, Facebook ads is where it started. And then, of course, Instagram. And then eventually, we saw an opportunity in influencer marketing to be able to get people to show off that they have the product. Okay, so how do you approach that? Because that's pretty intimidating for a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, the truth is you've got to approach your customers first. So what I did is I downloaded a tool, User Gems on Shopify, which sorts your customers by the amount of followers they have. Okay. And so I would get a notification if someone had over a thousand followers, if they would buy from us. And we started getting people with 100,000 followers, 200,000 followers, 50,000 followers. And so I'd pick up the phone and give them a call and say, hey, you know, are you on social media? I'd play dumb and they'd be like, yes. And said, uh, we have an amazing referral program. We pay up to 50% you know, of the sale to you. And I can put a coupon code right now. It takes me five seconds to set up a coupon code if you wanted to share, if you liked the product. And then I could pay you. I said, oh, that sounds cool. So, uh, you know, one out of two would do it. Is that just a DM? Just message them? and DM, email, and phone call. Okay. And sometimes I text them. I say, hey, it's a CEO. Your name came across my desk, and I'm supposed to call 10 customers. They make sure that they're doing well. How's the product? Do you happen to have social media? You know, so depending on how I pitched it, yeah. you know, you do that a couple hundred times, and you start to have a little bit of baby little network effect. And people start to say, hey, I want to make money doing that product. Hey, I want to do that. So that's where we started. Then I found platforms like Brand Snob, which is an iPhone app. It's a Tinder of influencer marketing. You can swipe left, swipe right. Okay. I found Famebit, which is Google-owned now. So you just go out there and negotiate with people to do a thing on there. But my thing from the beginning has always been, I want them to try the product. I want them to like the product. Because it just feels different when you know that they use the yeah, product. Yeah, and also you it's know. honest, right? It's which true. It's kind of nice. You have some big ones now. You've got Floyd Mayweather. You've got uh, Nicki Minaj. And, right. We've uh, done work with so so many now. And uh, uh, Kim Kardashian. You have to have her if you're going to have an influencer. The Kardashians right. have been great. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're, they're great influencers. And we did some work with Kourtney Kardashian's new media property. And you know, we've got some bigger, I mean, we can't get bigger than Kardashians, but we've got some really big, interesting plays. We now are an exclusive licensee of Elvis Presley, which is really cool. A timeless collection. Mm -hmm. And they run the gamut because everyone's like, how do I get the big one, right? And it's like, you got to, pun intended, snowball your way into it, yeah. right? And you've got to start with your customers. Then go on Brand Sob and Fame Bit. Start with those people, the smaller influencers. Start with the bloggers. And then once you've got that momentum, then you say, okay, now I understand who my customer actually is. Who do they watch? Mm -hmm. Who do they follow? And then it's like, hmm. Okay. And we had misfires. We had a lot of misfires. That's why I'm, I'm talking from experience. Yeah. Is we went after the Instagram models because they had so many followers mm -hmm. and so much engagement. Unfortunately, what we found is that a lot of them drive impressions, sure, and double taps to like the photo, but there was no intent behind the like. Just have dudes that like looking at girls in bikinis, right? I don't blame them. You know? yeah. And I should have known that. Right. But uh, we spent a lot of money in things like that. And it's not just... Because there are some Instagram models, men and female, mm -hmm. that do have a lot of people that like looking at them because they look good, but they're also influencers. So okay. it's not one shoe fits everybody. But I would say we started to really look at people who are highly regarded. You know, It could be someone with only 100,000 followers, but they have an affinity with their audience. Yeah. And how do you measure affinity on Instagram or YouTube? Comments. You know, what are they saying about the post? Is there any kind of screening tool to make that research easier that you know of or use? There are a bunch of tools out there. I think there are probably a thousand tools now. You know, we've got a little bit of a recipe for it now. Okay. And the recipe is, are they getting 2 to 5% engagement rate in terms of likes? Are they getting, you know, 100 plus comments, 1,000 plus comments? Mm -hmm. Comments are probably the strongest indicator. Okay. Nobody leaves comments anymore. So comments are huge. Okay. Are they omni-channel? Are they on YouTube? Are they on Instagram? Are they on Facebook? In my opinion, YouTube's the best network. Really? Why? Uh, it's long form. Uh, it stays there for a long time. Okay. It acquires organic traffic. Uh, Instagram story is 24 hours. The algorithm does not favor organic reach anymore. And it's gone when it's gone. Yeah. 
So if you could pay the same price for a YouTube video versus an Instagram story, I'm doing YouTube videos all day versus Instagram. So are you having your influencers do YouTube videos? Exactly. And also YouTube advertising. I think YouTube advertising is also a very high impact, very engaged way to build your brand and, and drive sales versus, again, the 24-hour story or someone just holding your product saying, I love snow. <laughs> right. it's like, you got paid to say that. You right. know? We never want to come off that way. Right. And sometimes we'll get comments where they're like, oh, Gronk looks like he's just you know, hawking a product. It's like, well, he owns equity in the company. It's his company. Mm -hmm. And he talks about it. And so you know, we can be more flexible with him. But when we're doing things like with a celebrity, we're thinking through, like with Elvis Presley, we're thinking through a blue coconut line okay. with blue suede. And yeah. Maybe even incorporating blue suede on the wireless device. So there's real blue suede yeah, on yeah, it, yeah. his Smart. signature Factual. on it. You know, things like that. So you got to make it authentic. Otherwise, people kind of see through it. What's the story here? Mm -hmm. You know, or is it a facade? Mm -hmm. And a facade might be able to last if you slam it down people's throat. But after a while, customers are smart enough to catch on. So then for the bigger celebrities, did you approach them or how does that work? A lot of them approach us now because I think that, one, we built a brand that, you know, we are the highest priced product generally, mm -hmm. but we are, we believe, the best product. And celebrities actually buy and use our product. And so... That helps a lot when a manager or an agent is looking at like what kind of deals, who do you want us to go after? Right. And they say, oh, I bought this thing, it looks pretty cool. Right. I saw them working with a bunch of celebs, why don't hit them up? They clearly have the budget. Mm -hmm. They clearly know how to work with celebrities. Right. Hit them up. And so once you get one or two of them, and you can go on like bookingagentinfo.com. If you just search booking, there are a bunch of these websites that are essentially catalogs of celebrity information mm -hmm. and they have their agents on there, their like Gmails. IMDb and those yeah, it's like IMDb and it says, here's who their manager is, give them a call. Yeah. And you can pop on the phone, you can give them a call. That side of the business is still handled mainly by me. Okay. It's very expensive, that's why. Yeah. So it's done in person. It's done breaking bread. So if you're sitting down with somebody, a lot of people wonder how do those deals shape out because they may say, well, we want a million dollars. But that's not necessarily the best way to do that deal and deals to get done lots of different ways. Have you found a kind of an approach or a format that seems to work for you that you would recommend? You know, celebrities get pitched deals all the time and everybody pitches them equity. Like, yeah. I'll give you 10%, you know, my startup. It's just supply and demand. So we look at licensing, royalties, minimum cash payments, upfront cash payments, and then how are we going to complement their brand and not just subtract from their brand? Mm -hmm. And how are we going to build royalties for their kids? We want their kids to get checks from us. And so if it's the right fit, we're thinking 50 years out. And what does that look like 10 years out, five years out? And then how does a launch look like? Because mm. that's important. So then it's like talking about, does Rob use teeth whitening? Mm. No, he doesn't. Why not? Because he has sensitive teeth. Interesting. He's never whitened his teeth. No, he's never whitened them. But he's willing to give it a shot. But if it doesn't cause sensitivity, he's really going to be on board. You know, so say, okay, give him 21 days. See what he thinks. Mm -hmm. And you just, you got to believe in your product. And then at that point, once you get them to believe, don't rush a deal ever. Okay. Let it sit with timing. They got all kinds of stuff. One minute they're launching the biggest movie, so the price is to the roof. Yeah. Next minute they're worried if they're ever going to get another deal. Exactly. Yeah. So you never know. So just just relax. Keep focus on what matters. Building a great product. Mm -hmm. Building a great team. Focus on your margin. Focus on your revenue growth. Focus on those things. And in the meantime, make your customers influencers. Use the fame bits and whatevers. And then start talking to some of the agents of. The Rock Johnson, and uh, maybe talk to a Chris Jenner and see if something makes sense there, and start of thinking through that and what that looks like, and plan ahead so that you know what that might cost. So if you go into raise around the funding and you say, "Hey, Justin Bieber loves our products, five hundred thousand of that's going to him, mm -hmm. and this is what we're doing together. We're doing a special flavor. We're doing a whole line." Then you have that kind of teed up yeah. so that when you raise growth capital or you get working capital or you go to the bank, you have something there to expedite your brand. But don't think that the celebrity is going to, I mean, it could break your brand. But it doesn't make your brand. Mm -hmm. It could break it if you choose the wrong one. But mm -hmm. it usually doesn't make or break your brand. A celebrity is just going, it's just, just a platform to get your message out to more people in front of more people. It doesn't necessarily drive sales directly. It's a brand awareness play. Mm -hmm. So make sure you have your mission, your messaging, and make sure you're kind of buttoned up before you go and do a Kardashian deal. Okay. So the one last thing I want to chat about before we go, and thanks for taking the time. You said you were really focused now on international expansion, both online and in retail. Can you talk about that for a minute? Of course. I kind of realized it early on, but what I failed to fully realize is that it's not only Americans who have teeth. Mm -hmm. Turns <laughs> out everybody, turns turns out, out most people. Turns do. out most people have teeth. <laughs> yeah. And even if someone's got one tooth, we can brush it, we can whiten it, we can floss it. So uh, 
I started to think through whether the markets that appreciate luxury products or premium products, American designed premium products, mm -hmm. and we make our consumables here in, in the United States, mostly in California, but American designed premium products and are social media savvy or, mm -hmm. or social media hungry and heavy. And we start to look at places like Brazil. And I just Google that. I'm like, which country has the most usage on Instagram? Sure. Done. Which one for YouTube? Done. We found the Latin audience has a strong affinity for YouTube. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, what can we do? Oh, let's find influencers that have millions of followers. Oh, wow, they're one-fifth the cost of yeah. the U.S.? <laughs> yeah. One-tenth? Nice. Grab that, smack it onto YouTube, change our pricing structure to match what's reasonable there. And then once we start getting traction, say, is there a distributor that can help us build retail expansion in Mexico City? Mm -hmm. Call them up, give them a great deal, give them 10% of all the sales, don't be greedy, and let them do all the work to drive the sales in retail. So international online was the first step. Mm -hmm. Why are we just advertising on Facebook to US? Mm -hmm. Why not Canada? Why not the UK? Why not here? Why not there? Oh, the UK has certain regulations? Okay, let's modify our formula. And it's like, okay, done. And all of a sudden we can understand where the average order value by country, the revenue per click per country. Mm -hmm. We start to understand that the US is great, but maybe it's not that great. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden we realize Singapore is amazing. Mm -hmm. But what's the scalability there? I don't know. Then we find South Korea really loves our skincare products. Mm -hmm. They love our lip care. Number one, it's the beauty capital of the world. That makes sense. In France, we launched Snow France. And in France, they buy the wireless more than the wired. They spend more. Okay. Interesting. Once the French customer for us that we see is once they're convinced that it works or they want to try it, they want the best. Hmm. Where Americans, sure, there's a good mix of that, mm -hmm. but they're still a little bit like, I'm going to start with the base model. I can move up. Okay. Where the French customer we see is they say, okay, I'm sold. What's the absolute best and what's all that I need with it mm. so that I can have those results? I want the best of the best. That's pretty cool. So it's interesting. So you start to learn about that and then you change the website based on that. Mm. You lead the customer to where they really want to go. One website or are you doing .frs and all that kind of We're stuff? We're doing .frs. Mm -hmm. We tried to like, you know, one hour translation type of thing and <laughs> you know, all that stuff. And I was embarrassed because we had done 14 different languages, German and, and Polish and everything. Mm -hmm. And I showed it to a buddy of mine. He goes, oh my goodness, do you know what this says? <laughs> and then this doesn't translate the same way. Right, this, and, right. this. and I said, okay, I've got to invest. Again, do it the right way from the start. I should have known that. <laughs> and so now we're doing it right from the start. And we're doing influencer marketing as well in France. It's very successful for us, nice. uh, very scalable. And it's helping to build a brand. And the next phase is we're doing TV commercials in, in France. We're buying out the train stations and the buses mm. and then moving into retail and really building that support channel for France and then asking our French retailers, what would you like us to create? Because that may not be what we're creating right now. Right. They're our customers mm -hmm. as well. Retailers are our customers. Our customers are our customers. Everybody is our customer. So we're asking them and learning from them. So now we're creating acai berry stuff in Brazil. We're creating a more facial skincare mm -hmm. in South Korea and Singapore. Makes sense. Snow is like pure and white, and there's something culturally there that I've learned that if you have more pale skin, it's like a sign of wealth or right. something like yeah. that. So, yeah. so we're now, we realize Everybody our brand is... don't have people here want to get tan, people that's that right. want to get less tan. That's, that's right. funny. Nice. That's awesome. I know you have a thing to go to, so I won't hold you any longer, but thanks for taking the time to share. For people that are interested in more of the product or getting a hold of you or um, any of that kind of stuff, where would the best place for them to reach you be? Our website is trysnow.com. Okay. So you can try it out, trysnow.com. And then I'm on Instagram at Josh Snow. And then if you just Google Josh Snow, uh, you'll, you should be able to find something. Should show up. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks, Roland.